everybody, Jonathan Richards here, lead trainer with the Austin Board of Realtors. Today, we're gonna give you a crash course on how to put your listing into the MLS. I'm joined today by my good friend and colleague, Mr. Jack Sellers. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So first things first, where do we get to add edit or where do we go in order to input our listing into the MLS? You guys should be all be familiar with your dashboard as you can see right here. And up at the top, we have several different options and about three quarters of the way down, almost towards the end, you'll notice where it says add edit. I'm gonna click on this guy. It's gonna bring up an input page and this is where we're gonna tell it, do we wanna add a new listing or edit an existing listing, okay? For today's purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and add new and then it's gonna ask me what type of property am I wanting to put into the MLS and I have some options. Obviously residential, I also have residential income which might be multifamily or investment. We got farm, I've got land if it's lot or it's uh, land per se with no sticks on it or commercial as well but for today's purposes let's just click on residential and then I have the option of pre-filling a lot of the information a couple of different ways the first way would be from realist tax so if I know what county I'm in and I neither know the tax ID or the owner's name in this case I actually know the tax ID so I'm gonna pop it in there and I'm gonna hit search and when I do that Make sure it's gonna think for just a moment and then it's gonna come up with my property information and I could click fill right here and that would start my listing and save me a lot of trouble and filling in a lot of the fields that I might have to go to that tax roll or the county appraisal district or website or something of that nature in order to get that information. You can also fill from an existing listing. That's right here in the middle. So if it's, had, if it's been listed in the MLS in the past, if you've listed it, you can use an old MLS number here to fill that or you can search for it right here as well. But for today's purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and hit start with a blank property. No matter if you fill from existing or you fill from an MLS, this is the page that it's going to bring you to. A couple of things to notice about here is if you've been using MLS for a while, you'll notice that there is no status tab up here anymore. We've actually changed that. And all of your information from the status is actually right down here at the bottom. And you can see here, I can save it as incomplete. I still have that validate button to make sure that I filled all the fields out that uh, are required and I'm not missing anything. I can also cancel this listing and cancel it out altogether. Or if I'm ready to go live on the MLS and everything is complete, I can simply hit submit property. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Jack, to take it away with our first tab. Thanks, Jonathan, so much. Jack Sellers here, and I'm going to talk to you about the listing tab today. So one of the things that you're going to notice when you get to the listing tab, the field special listings conditions. That sticks out the most. One of the things that you're gonna see is there is not a yes or no field. So if you want to say no in the new system, simply come over here and select the none button. That equals no in the new system. Uh, if it is a yes, for example, there is a special listing conditions, maybe it is in foreclosure, then when you select that field, that would select yes. And again, if there is none, instead of no in the new system, you just select none. And moving on, another great addition that we have on here are the counties. So before you only had access to the counties in Texas. When you open up the counties now, we have added in every single county inside of Texas. And you might ask, well, can I list outside of the state? Of course you can. You can list wherever you would like. If it is out of the state, scroll to the very bottom and then you have out of state selected right there. Then the other additional field that we are super excited to talk about is the additional parcels. So for example, in the old system, you might have had a listing that had two PID numbers and you had to do that little Band-Aid fix. That's no longer the issue here. If you have two PIDs, we have an additional field right here where you'd say, yes, there is an additional parcel. And then you put the parcel number in the description right here. All right, that's a new update. I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Jonathan. Awesome, thanks, Jack. On to our next tab, it is the general tab. So you will notice some changes in here. So first things first, 
we have an expanded list of input options, right? We've removed those tiny scrolly boxes that would only let you see a few options at a time. So this may look like we've added more options and in some cases we have expanded some of the choices. However, keep in mind that you're used to seeing a long list of options in those tiny scroll boxes. So we've removed the box, but many of our old fields had lists just as long as these. Now, this change can play some tricks on your eyes, but I promise you it's going to be a better experience for you to make sure you see all the options available to make sure you don't miss any details in putting in your listings. I'm going to show you a couple of changes to this page right here. Waterfront features. This used to be a yes or no. We've actually expanded that to give more options. So if there are no waterfront features, you can just go ahead and check none. Or if there are any, you can uh, select whatever feature that it has here. Another item that you will see in all of these lists are C remarks. It's the same thing, guys, as you used to see C agent. However, when you check this, I'm gonna give you a little teaser. At the end, you're gonna be able to have agent remarks and you'll be able to put those remarks in there. So if you type C remarks, make sure when you get to the remarks section here in just a little bit that you remember what that is so you can detail it out for any agent looking at your property. All right, on to Jack for the next tab. Thanks, Jonathan. We're gonna go over the additional tab. Now, I'm gonna tell you this tab is probably gonna be the one that scares the most people out there, but don't worry, there's not a big change here. So what we used to have were those little scroll boxes, remember? You would scroll through the field, you might have clicked on something, and kept scrolling, and you wouldn't be able to see the whole uh, choice, everything you selected, so now you can. It is all spelled out, it is alphabetical order, so it's gonna be from A to Z. So the one thing I wanted to point out that has changed is we used to have what master bedroom downstairs, yes or no. We don't have that anymore. Master bedroom is now defined as primary bedroom and it's not a yes or no field. So if the primary bedroom is downstairs, just go under interior features and you're going to select primary bedroom downstairs. Another one that I wanna point out is accessibility features. This used to be disability features. So again, if there are no in, in the old system equals no, you will come down here, for example, with no accessibility features, you would select none equaling no. But if there are, you can simply come, find them A to Z. And again, if you're having trouble finding a word, don't forget that you can do Command or Control F, and then you can search for the word and it will highlight it on your screen. All right, gonna turn it back over to you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jack. All right, on to the next tab, guys. And it is a brand new tab called the Rooms tab. And this new Rooms collection is basically an exciting new way for you to specifically tell agents what each room in your listing looks like. So think of it this way. When you select an option under interior features, you now have the opportunity to tell which room of the property contains that feature. Now, more importantly, there are some requirements to keep in mind for this section. You're going to be required to put in a minimum of three rooms and they include the primary bedroom or bedroom, primary bathroom or bathroom, and kitchen. These three rooms are critical for agents and clients to know the details of in order to paint an accurate picture for your listing. So let's go through a row and I'll show you exactly how to fill this out. So today I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on primary uh, bathroom. I'm going to put this on the main level and I'm going to add a couple of features. I'm going to add um, a dual vanity and also a jetted tub. Now I have the ability also over here to create a room description up to 500 characters if there's additional description that's not included in these room features. And then you can see right here, I have the ability to delete this and start over. I also have the ability down here at the bottom to add more. You'll continue to repeat this for the other two required rooms. And each time you click validate or more after completing a row, the system will add another row automatically. You're welcome to add as many rooms as you'd like. But again, the bare minimum is gonna be that bathroom bedroom and kitchen. So make sure you're inputting those before moving on to the other rooms. On to you, Jack. Thanks, Jonathan. 
All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you about the documents and utilities section. So one of the things that you're gonna notice, again, there's no scroll boxes. If you have a familial relation, so you are representing somebody that's a family member, you have that filled under disclosures. You also have the seller's disclosure. So you wanna make sure that you upload all of your documents and you select all of the documents over here under the documents available and your disclosures. Another thing that you might notice is when you're going through these, there are no numbers at the top of each of these boxes. So before we used to have those, and that meant you could not pick more than that that amount, that was a maximum amount, a number of fields that you could select. Now, there are no maxes, you can select as many fields as you want, and again, remember, they're from A to Z. All right, Jonathan, back to you. Thank you, Jack. We are cooking right along, guys. On to another tab, and this is the Green Energy tab. That's right, it's another new section, but it's just a simple reworking of our old Green Energy options. You'll notice that there's no specific yes, no field for EES features or documents, but remember our yes, no logic, right? By selecting anything for the green energy efficient or green sustainability fields, it's going to be more of a specific yes. And if you don't have any, a simple none will work, all right? We still have an updated EES form to reference. So if you do make any selections here, the expectation is still that you'll upload that completed document to the listing. Now, when you're entering green building verification type, it is also important that once you select it, that you also include the metric, the status, the rating, and the year. And of course, if there is no green building verification type, you'll just simply select none and you will be good to go. All right, back to you, Jack. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, Jack back with you. So we're gonna go over the financial, the showing and the agent tab. So under the financial, you're gonna notice that we have the HOA is now called association, yes or no. So if you select yes right here, remember if you select yes for the HOA, you're gonna to need to put the name, the frequency, the transfer fee and everything else associated with it. We also over here is where you're gonna put in the taxes, any exemptions and the possession. When we go to the showing information, one thing that you're gonna notice right here is you're gonna fill out the owner type and then any showing requirements. And you might've noticed, we now have a huge field down here for showing instructions. So now you don't have to go to the private remarks or formerly known as agent remarks. So if there's more than one alarm code, maybe they have an alarm and disalarm code, you can put that all under your showing instructions right here and anything else you need to convey to the other agents. Then when we move on to the agent and the office, you're gonna notice this is where you put in your compensation information and then also who the listing ID is gonna be or the agent. And again, if you're a broker and you need to switch the listing over, all you do is you come over here and you put the new listing ID, hit the refresh button and that will transfer the listing over to the new agent. All right, back to you, Jonathan. Awesome, thank you, Jack. Isn't Jack a rock star? Let's give him a round of applause. Yay, Jack. All right, guys, stick with me. We are on the last tab, guys. Remarks, tours, and internet. Here we go. First things first is you're gonna notice you have a lot more room for fun. That's right, we've actually upped all of these fields to contain up to 2,000 characters each. So you're no longer having to type in shorthand language that would make even a tween texture cringe. A couple of other things to point out on this page, you will notice private remarks. This is formerly known as agent remarks. So this is private only for the agents. And then public remarks right here, this is what will display in any IDX or VOW websites, okay? Next section down is your branded virtual tour. And a couple of things I just want you guys to understand about this. Remember that branded virtual tour and video tours get the most exposure outside of the MLS, while unbranded gets more exposure within the MLS, okay? So unbranded, you can't have any contact information. However, you can uh, have the listing brokerage on there, okay? So that's something to remember there. Syndication, this is where you're gonna sit down with your broker and your clients and decide where you want this listing to go out on the interweb. So you'll make your selections here, and then you are done, guys. What you're gonna do from here is you're gonna go right down 
here and hit this validate button. And that's gonna go through all of these tabs to make sure that you didn't miss any of the required fields. If it did, it'll bring up a little uh, exclamation mark or a red dot for you and you'll be able to go back and fill those in. And then once you are done, you can come right down here to the bottom and save as incomplete. If you're not ready to go in the MLS, or if you're ready to go live, you can hit submit property and you are good to go. And there you have it, a quick crash course in how to input your listing into the MLS. Now, if you want more detailed instruction, head over to abor.com, go to our Academy tab, and look for the class listed as Add and Editing Listings. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, give us a shout right here at the Austin Board of Realtors.